place of disadvantage to a platform. Um, things like that. Like, those have always been really, really good. And I hope oh, we see more of that later on. Yeah, I'm, I'm always a big fan of, of, of all the spaces, and Falco definitely has a lot of flash to him, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, but here we're going to get a little bit a little bit slower pace. We're going to slow it down, as we don't see the Pac-Man from Mr. Caleb, as he's been using for most of the bracket. Instead, we get his, uh, his purely coined uh, Jane Wick, the, <laughs> the femme fatale uh, phenom. Oh, and oh, Caleb knows how to. Caleb knows how to work. <laughs> he knows how to, he knows how to work the clock. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. Oh, well, that's that's extremely fast recovery. Um. Yeah. I was, it's a. <laughs> Uh, with like with all the Mies, you get to choose their specials, and Caleb definitely has two of the two specials that are less seen than many of the others, um, or at least one of them. Uh, the first being the up B. You don't often try and see the the, the up B without a hitbox. While you do have the most aerial control, most people look for the the first one, which is just an explosion at the bottom and rockets you straight up uh, pretty far. Uh, since uh, since me gunner has really good horizontal momentum to manipulation uh, or the other is the third one because it's a really great like, it's a frame three out of shield option that kills yeah uh, this, oh, this, wow. oh yeah that up tilt to killing up tilt pretty strong as we see a couple fares back and forth uh, the other one uh, of his special moves is that stealth blast which he uses to really good effect as a uh, it's kind of similar to how Joker uses Aegon and, and um, Iha to where he's when he's off stage he tries to use it to cover the ledge, as well as just a, a grounded mix-up because the stealth blast moves incredibly fast. So Zane's gonna have to stay on their wit, gonna have to keep their wits about them. That's, that's the phrase. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know, you know what I'm looking forward to is seeing how the projectiles will interact with each other. Um, oh. Well, that was very close. Um, I saw earlier that the, I believe called Pigeon, it didn't, it didn't really interact much with the F-Smash. It kind of just flowed through. So I don't know if it just didn't make any contact with the F-Smash, but it looked like Duck can just side B and like Caleb couldn't projectile through it. So I'm curious to know if that's actually true. Right. Well, hopefully we'll see that interaction again, because if that's true, that's huge. I know Clay Pigeon dis is gets destroyed by most hitboxes, but if the rapid fire of F, of, uh, F Smash isn't isn't strong enough, then perhaps he can just clip right through, uh, clip right through a standing uh, a standing Ms. Wick and really hard punish. Him. Cool. A couple of those falling back airs were very very uh, threatening. Yeah. I think I think he could have spaced it a little bit better. They they were a little bit too close. Catching up the stealth. catching the stealth blast. Uh, I think I think Caleb has uh, taken your word to heart because he's staying at a very safe distance right now. <laughs> and there he finds that. Once that uh, was... ooh. <laughs> go ahead. What was, what was you... I, 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 I was just gonna say that stealth blast just blew me away. Um, just seeing how much damage it tacked on, how far he went. It's like. Once Zane was recovering, um, he kind of just had the stealth blast ready, and then when he put himself in a really poor position right there, he got hit by the back air. So it makes me wonder what he's going to do in that matchup, because it doesn't really seem like he could clash with anything. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of a weird kit, but it's a kit that works well in counteracting a lot of powerful item play. And Duck Hunt's whole shenanigans is his powerful item play. So things like grenade on uh, the downbeat, on the timer, or I think it's remote mine, remote bomb, whatever it's called, uh, mm -hmm. and on top of stealth blast, make it so that he can, uh, Caleb can break zone really quickly. But so we see Zane kind of start off with a little bit of a tempo change. Like he's trying to look for more grabs and. 
see if he can find his way forward a little bit more frequently and kind of build a lead that Caleb can't uh, can't surmount. I like that he's using jump more, you know, doing the full hop to like jump, double jump mix-ups here and there, just so that he can kind of mess up the timing of uh, Caleb's projectiles. A couple more bombs. Yeah. All right. I really did like that form of aggression uh, coming out from Caleb. He knew he, he knew that he was on ledge and tried to push forward thanks to that beer verse forward air and ended up getting caught by one of uh, one of Zane's uh, best laid plans. Oh, poor gun man didn't even have a chance. Second it was one? inevitable. Oh, well. that's. <laughs> It's unfortunate. I always want to see when that kills, but whenever I see the down air used in a combo, it's always easier to recover from it. Yeah, that's why yeah, Zane has been going for two. He's been looking for looking for that extra that extra spike to confirm the kill. But at the very least, Caleb's been Caleb's been playing it right. But at the very least, he's uh, he's getting the damage off of the full combo. That's it. Ooh, Zane has themselves Finally not in the kill. a full stop. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. Like, the clay pigeon, after the throw, if it it completes its arc and it just sits on the ground and you can still detonate it while it's on the floor. Uh, like you, like anything else. So it's a it's a perfect little trigger trap if the if the opponent isn't respecting the, the grounded clay pigeon. Like, they're they're really trying to kill that gunman, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's rough, dude. He lost his hat. His pants were down. Like, oh, he's having a rough day. <laughs> All right, good leg trapping from Zane's part. But that said, deal with that projectile. Getting back to center stage for a brief moment. The only other gunman that I really. Uh, not gun, gunner, me gunner. Uh, that I've really watched any with any sort of frequency is uh, is Proton. Uh, shout out to shout out to Thomas. Uh, but he has not been playing much Wi-Fi. I think mostly because of school. He's uh, but for whatever reason, uh, Proton plays very very differently. Uh, he's he's a lot more focused on ledge traffic. Like he's trying to put you on ledge and keep you there forever. Uh, which is why he much prefers tools like the flame burst uh, and the missiles. But the stealth blast works for works for Caleb, yet Zane is the one that takes that second game with just over what felt like overwhelming amount of uh, of positional advantage in a lot of instances. He would always find a ways to catch Caleb's air dodge, catch him to landings, and hold him back in a spot where Caleb didn't have much room to move. They they. I also think Zane just had more opportunities to kind of just sit in shield. Like you notice here and there, every time Caleb goes for a projectile, it's like, okay, well now I can just sit in shield, press B, and you get hit by the can. It's it's, it's very interesting how Zane is kind of able to take advantage of that projectile game in neutral. Yeah, it's a power. It's a it's a powerful tool. And all of those projectiles, and there's plenty of them flying across the screen. So keeping track of them is part of the game that both players are having to cope with right now. Like, what what can I react to? What can I commit to? That's not going to leave me open to uh, the expanded like area of effect that both characters have. Yeah. And speak a... of leaving yourself open, I saw what I, I noticed this a lot. Whenever uh, Caleb would shield, um, Zane would just grab him. And just kill him off of it, because he'd always have the perfect can setups. So it makes me wonder if he's had something up his sleeve to kind of counteract that. It seems like he's been open to that a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, and uh, here's the here's the pack back back uh, here for our true retro revolution. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> that was just so active. Uh, Caleb, I guess, is trying to play the uh, he's trying to play the wall game as opposed to just outmatch uh, Zane's uh, projectile pressure. He's trying to 
instead keep his keep his combos uh, more uh, probably more consistent i assume pac-man has more uh, consistent damage output and instead block whatever zane is trying to do uh, as they put up all of these gunmen and throughout these uh, clay pigeons uh, they're they're not going to get past uh, a, a patient pac-man yeah that that said i gotta say um this pac-man is kind of just going in um He's knocking him off with tilts. Uh, every time that the Zane puts out a gunman, uh, he's already in the air putting out a hydrant. So it's like he's just prepared. I can, uh, it's like we were mentioning last set, as I completely agree with you. Uh, Caleb's uh, field awareness is really one of his best qualities as a player. So when he sees that opening, uh, he can utilize Pac Man's like, amazing damage output and surprisingly strong. Uh, surprisingly long, rather combo combo game, to to put himself at a pretty solid lead. Uh, however, they seem to be a little bit behind Zane's. Okay, you know what? Ooh, just raw smashing neutral. <laughs> yeah. Just, okay. That's. I mean, it attributes to the same thing that has been going on. It that was going on in the mouse rat set and going on uh, throughout game one, uh, at least of this set. Uh, Caleb knows when you want to come in. He knows when you're trying to push forward, and he's really ready to punish that. Uh, and on top of having uh, positional altercations, uh, pos positional alterations with things like the hydrant war. Mm -hmm. So Zane has their work cut out for them, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm just looking at this wall of pressure that. Caleb's putting out, it's just like every time Zane comes back on stage, he's instantly off stage. Just because Caleb's just aware of where he wants to go. Good uh, grab. Great, great grab. Yeah. Oh, oh that ain't Caleb. Great, great DI. But, oh, that was an amazing trap. Um, the melon has so many more uses the more adept you get at Pac Man. Because you just kind of realize, I want something to stick here. And just be here, and the melon moves. N not at all. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like wow. Oh, okay. And the Kaijin fights through the gunman and gets at the dog. Whew. Uh, the FD pick and the Pac-Man switch working out uh, in working out amazingly for for Caleb is that game two uh, leaves Zane with a lot for a lot for them to think about. I wonder how he died in this first interaction. F smash and then uh, hydrant mistech. Ooh, yeah, I feel like that kind of decided it. It's like once he had the stock lead, it's like Caleb was kind of running away with it, and then that Caleb, that was just unlucky. <laughs> Caleb with a lead is uh, is frightening because he's he's so consistent at making sure that. He's so consistent at punishing opponents' aggression that once he can force them to be aggressive and to approach him, that it unlocks so much of his punish game. Because now he's now he's limited their tools just by having a lead. Right, game three, sticking with the duck hunt. Zane sees nothing wrong with their uh, with their character and just needs to switch up the game plan. Back to PS2 we go. Alrighty. Oh, I'm willing to expect if, uh, if Zane does end up winning this game, uh, they're uh, immediately banning FD. <laughs> oh, definitely. After that showing, I, I would want to ban FD. <laughs> Gotta, what's really tough about H Hydrant on this stage is that with the amount of launch, without a lot of, amount of knockback that Key has, uh, the hydrant, the key will fight through hydrant and cover the rest of the grounded stage. But hydrant will pop up to uh, to actually bounce or at least very least cover the platform. So it almost forces you to go into shield, which then means Pac-Man can start taking stage. Yeah, definitely, and it's also good for catching jumps as well. Oh, true. Which I That's... think is the main way he's been trying to avoid projectiles. Good. Good uh, character awareness from coming out from Zane, knowing that uh, Pac-Man's dash attack is 
super lagless, so he was very uh, Zane was aware of the of the nair that Caleb was coming out. Could, could he have gotten an up smash from there, or was Bear the way maybe, to go? maybe if he hard read it, because he like Caleb did end up jumping. Um, but if they hard read that nair and knew it for sure, then Zane could have yeah just run under and uh, up smash that. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, and you have to play super careful in a matchup like Pac-Man because, especially at 150, a, a sneeze kills you. <laughs> yeah, bo both of them are just very, very scared. They do not want to be the first to lose the stock. <laughs> yeah. And Zane looks like they're not trying to give Caleb an inch, even with the, uh, the percent that they're at. Oh wait, that can, that can was placed perfectly, and here it comes, Heatsy can can. Can. <laughs> can is everywhere. The can it's, is. It's always there. I love that, like hitting it one way, so by using the shots from the unseen third player to bounce it back towards the ledge. Uh, Zane, very Zane's potent can play netted him the stock first. But it won't take, it doesn't look like it'll take much for Caleb to, Caleb, uh, to, to even this back up. So it's a mount, like, what can Zane do with the limited time uh, that this lead will last? 12%, uh, we respect it. <laughs> Good downer. Well, that was interesting. When uh, Zane threw him and missed the opportunity to hit him with the can, he just went straight for Pigeon. I think you should do that more often, actually, because then it covers it covers air dodge. Because they air dodge and they land with lag, and they get hit by another one. And speaking of which, I missed the full up air. That's such a shame. Uh, it looks like that's an interesting thing to know. It looks like, at the very least, uh, some of the gunmen do just under 13%. So. That lets uh, Zane set up any one of their uh, their tilts to send can at whatever angle they so choose. But now, yeah, oh, the 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 trick of Duck Hunt is their recovery is pretty. It's like Olimar's. It's very. It's pretty slow. It's got no hitbox, so it's a free. It's a free punish if you're able to force them into it. And Caleb definitely did. So it netted him. It netted him the, the trade and advantage. Now he's the one sitting pretty with that stock lead. Yeah, and that dash attack from Caleb again, like, that's so good. Like, he knows that he can't jump above his own hydrant. He knows that if he rolls away, that's gonna put him in a bad position. So he just dash attacks and he punishes Zane for any positioning that he wants to get. Dashing away, but the gunman still hit him. That was so good. <laughs> a little bit of a volley with that can. And he, and the, the gravity on it sent it right into Kayla Race. 40, okay, well, 70 is quite a bit, but nothing we haven't seen Zane make up in quite a rap, in one rapid string. It's just a matter of can you land it? Can you find that pigeon? Can you find that nair? But Caleb's not looking like he's in any rush at all. When Zane does find that conversion, it's going to be a lot of damage, and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Oh, he's making a little bit of an adjustment coming out from uh, Caleb. Like early times, he was or early in game, uh, was it game three. If this is game four, I can recount. I swear. Um, <laughs> early in game three, he was using a lot more apple and fruit and a uh, melon. This time, he's. Uh, when he can charge up to Bell and Key, he will, but he's making a ton of use out of this orange since it is strong, it goes straight forward, and is able to interrupt a lot of the hitboxes that Zane has been uh, putting in the putting in center stage. And any sort of disruption, you can kind of just, you'll take with a full, you'll take very graciously. Ugh. Yeah, and speaking of orange, I, I really like how smart Caleb is with it because a lot of the time it'll clash with Pigeon, and when it does, he's ready to catch the orange again. It's a very smart move on his part. It's very true, and catch it and get to recharge right from when orange ends. 
you know, this is kind of reminiscent of stock one a little bit. Zayn, they're pushing 150, yet not not quite giving an inch. And if, uh, if Caleb can't take this stock soon, then you know we might we might find himself you know, he might find himself in a rough spot. Yet time is ticking down. So Zane always had not Zane. Uh, Caleb always has that on his side. While Zane has to keep that clock, keep his, uh, keep their head on a mental clock. I wonder if Caleb even knows. Cause it seems like he's going in more, and when he doesn't have to, he could just evade. Oh, I, I'm fairly sure he knows. <laughs> Caleb, Caleb's always very aware of the clock. Zane not oh. letting it affect their play too much as 10 seconds starts to wind down. Okay, uh, he, he definitely knows. He's yeah. up, he's in neutral. And there it is. Yeah, we saw we saw Zane fall in with the Hail Mary and that uh, full hop land and F smash, but Caleb played it smart. He used the time to his advantage, and that looks like the end of the winner's bracket run from Zane. A phenomenal duck hunt play, but Caleb with a lead is a, as a puzzle yet to be cracked by anyone in this bracket, and he'll, he's punched his ticket into grand finals because of it. Ooh, looks like next up is uh, all right. They're they're playing Tilde and Mouse Rat are currently playing game three, but the winner of that will go into losers semis. And that'll start our train and our forward propulsion to the who will, who will challenge Caleb in grand finals. So while we wait for that final loser uh, losers quarterfinals to wrap up, I'm going to ask you guys to enjoy these replays and perhaps consider dropping a follow to the House of Three Thousand stream.